coming up this warmer weather spawns gaping potholes, the enemy of cars throughout the tri-state area. And Mayor Giuliani has met with loud protests as he makes his first policy speech on the homeless. Plus, a New York City school custodian gets to go free despite being caught red-handed breaking the law. And the world of competitive skiing is in mourning today after a world-class skier crashes and dies. I'm Ren Scott in for Reggie Harris. And I'm Carol Ivana. Channel 2 News Saturday. The early edition is next. This special moment is brought to you by American Airlines, the official airline of the U.S. ski team. Donna Weinbrecht battled a blinding snowstorm to capture the mogul's gold medal in Alberville and return to her New Jersey hometown an Olympic hero. But disaster struck in the fall of 92, and Weinbrecht was sidelined by a knee injury for most of the 93 season. With months of training ahead and no young rivals in sight, Donna Weinbrecht has set her sights on gold in Lillehammer. The Olympic Winter Games, returning to CBS. I don't say this to many people, but the job we do is the most important job I can think of. Okay, guys, listen up. I mean, there's no such thing as a B-plus mechanic on this airline. Let's do it. Let's go. Even the most junior mechanic can keep an airplane in this hangar if there's a hint of a problem. You might think a job like this would become routine, but every now and then, I just take a walk through the terminal. And right there, you see what's important. Bernie Smilovitz, sports coverage with a difference on Channel 2 News. This is Channel 2 News Saturday. Good evening. The weather is in the news once again tonight as the tri-state area copes with the ravages that Mother Nature has left behind. We've had it all lately from Arctic-like temperatures to an unseasonable thaw. This was the sloppy mess we were forced to cope with last week. Icy snow blanketed the region, covering streets and sidewalks with a slick coat. Contrast that to today. Temperatures have warmed up, making life far more comfortable, but roads aren't faring as well. The drastic change is taking a toll on them, creating huge potholes that are doing a number on cars. We'll take a look at that story in a moment, but first, let's check in with Elaine Lewis, who says the prediction for tomorrow's uh, storm is a good one. Elaine? Yeah, at last, we've got some good news. You know, earlier in the week, all of the computer models were suggesting that we were going to have a storm developing in the Gulf and then taking a run up the coast and giving us a famous nor'easter. But now, as of last night and this morning, the models are suggesting that, yes, we are going to get a storm developing in the Gulf, as you see right here. However, instead of taking a run up the coast, it's going to stay to our south and go off the Carolina coast. So tomorrow, this is what we expect. We expect that that storm will head up and off the Carolina coast, continue out over the ocean. All of the heavy rain and snow for a change will be to our south. So it's looking good, and we'll talk more about the rest of the forecast later in the broadcast. Well, that's absolutely music to our ears. Thank you very much, Elaine. Well, if you've driven on the local roads lately, you already know it's pothole season. The drastic swings in temperature have created huge gouges in the pavement, making driving a jarring adventure. Channel 2, News, Channel 2 News is live in Manhattan where John Slattery has more on these natural enemies of the cars. John? It is a wintertime nightmare and it is back. It is a problem all over New York City. It's a problem on some spots of the FDR right behind me, but a particularly bad problem in the outer boroughs. Finally, a beautiful break in the wild winter weather, but with it comes a break in the roads. All together now starts with P, potholes. Potholes everywhere. Potholes everywhere? <laughs> yes, potholes, those pesky partitions in the pavement that come with any winter thaw. With this warm weather we've ha we're having this weekend, we're entering our seventh thaw since the beginning of January. The bone-jarring, teeth-rattling ruts occur, particularly in areas where flooding water seeps under cracks in the pavement and traffic loosens it up. How does the DOT the put it? The jarring causes pieces of, pot of asphalt to pop out, like divots or pop-tarts. Pop-tarts? Guess she's got her mind on breakfast already. But motorists may not make it to breakfast if the roads aren't fixed. All this weekend, the DOT has 12 crews out on the 220 miles of main arteries, and next week, 40 crews will be out on the 6,000 miles of local streets. And topping the DOT's top 10 list of putrid potholes, the BQE at the Kosciuszko Bridge, the intersection of the LIE and the BQE, the FDR, and the Bronx River Parkway. 
The only people who love potholes are tire people who fix the flats and repair the rims. Many of them are suddenly very busy, as are taxi drivers who try to dodge the craters. Yeah, it's too much, too much pot all over, you know. And it's not just a problem that is associated with January. City officials say this is a problem that's going to be with us for the duration of the winter. Channel 2 News is live in Manhattan. I'm John Slattery. Thank you, John. We look uh, forward to the rest of the winter. See you later. Well, it looks like a New York City school custodian who was caught red-handed sunning on his yacht when he was supposed to be at work will get off scot-free. William Ryan was charged with grand larceny after 60 minutes cameras caught him sunbathing during work hours. An investigation found he reported to work only two of 16 days. But yesterday, a judge dropped the charges because of apparent bungling by the Brooklyn DA's office. Apparently, Ryan's indictment was sent out with the wrong zip code, so he didn't get it within the six-month deadline. School investigators are outraged. We need to have some answers here because we put so much work into this case. It was so important. It's very difficult to accept that it's being dismissed because somebody didn't address an envelope correctly. The DA's office is appealing the decision. And the last defendant in the Glen Ridge rape trial is free today. Richard Corcoran was scheduled to go on trial Monday, but the victim's parents say they don't want their daughter to go through another ordeal. So yesterday, a judge dropped all charges against Corcoran. Four former Glen Ridge High School students were convicted last March in the attack on a mildly retarded girl. Co. Mayor Giuliani's plan to create a single New York City Police Department will begin this spring. Published reports today say the mayor will begin by combining administrative offices and emergency services from the three current police forces. The plan will reportedly allow more than 800 officers now behind desks to move into the field. And another report says Mayor Giuliani is planning to cut up to 18,000 jobs from the city payroll over the next year and a half. The New York Times says the mayor will offer some workers severance packages and other positions would be eliminated through attrition. Giuliani is facing a $2.3 billion budget deficit. And Mayor Giuliani's inner circle grew today as he picked two more people to join his cabinet. Giuliani introduced the new commissioners at Gracie Mansion this afternoon. They are longtime Brooklyn resident Marilyn Gelber in charge of the Department of Environmental Protection and Joseph Rose, commissioner of city planning. Giuliani says both are excellent public servants. Both Marilyn and Joe have vast and very wide experience, not only in city government, but with the issues that face the city of New York. And uh, we're very, very pleased and honored to have them joining the administration in two very uh, critical uh, positions. And earlier in the day, Giuliani made his first policy speech on the city's homeless. Addressing a group of advocates, the mayor's tone was more conciliatory than in the past. But as Channel 2's J.J. Gonzalez reports, protest still jeered his message. He was met with epithets and catcalls from members of ACT UP who turned their backs to heckle his proposed homeless policies. But the mayor played it cool. You right now may be displaying to the rest of this city why this problem is not being solved. Some protesters want the city's abandoned buildings to go to house the homeless. We were out here because Mayor Giuliani has no housing policy other than jail cells on Rikers Island and, and coffins in Potter's Field. The mayor says his program calls for the private sector to provide the housing. Abandoned buildings are a product of years and years of a city that delays the movement of abandoned buildings into the hands of private people who want to rebuild those buildings. A fire in a barrel warmed up homeless men at a small park near City Hall. Henry has been on the street for years. He wants... Facilities where we can stay permanently, a permanent place. A large number of people that are homeless don't just need a place to live, they also need services. They need services to deal with the need for employment, they need services to deal with drug addiction, they need services to deal sometimes with the problems of mental illness. What he said and what he does are two different things. He's arresting squeegee people, he's arresting panhandlers. Those people who are concerned by the threat and the fear and the criminal behavior that takes part on the part of some of the people that are homeless are also reacting to a real problem. And how does a pro rate the mayor's performance? His heart's in the right place, but he's going to have to demonstrate, I think, to New Yorkers that his programs are in the right place. J.J. Gonzalez, Channel 2 News.
Well, after the break, we'll tell you about a fire that closed the Russian tea room for lunch today and new information from Tanya Harding's ex-husband on her alleged role in the attack on Nancy Kerrigan. And once again, a youngster becomes an innocent victim of stray gunfire, but this story has a happy ending. And later, Los Angeles is hit by strong aftershocks that destroy even more structures. McCain introduces the ultimate experience for French fry lovers. New McCain Ultimate Spiral Fries. Spicy batter. Or with a unique crispy coating. For an earth-shaking crunch. And a taste that'll have you on the edge of your seat. Delicious new McCain Ultimate Spirals. Experience them for yourself. McCain, the ultimate taste. I love teaching, and I know that what I do can make a real difference in children's lives. It's a lot of responsibility, and it's exhausting working with this many kids all day long. Our classes are too large, and funding cuts have hurt all New York City schools. But there's no substitute for the feeling I get every time one of my kids suddenly catches on and begins reading, really reading, for the first time. That's what keeps me going. That's what keeps us all going. The chance to light that spark. Dear Midas customers, we don't want your family riding around on bad brakes. That's why we'll fix the brakes on most cars the same day you bring it in. You don't want to be just the best of the best. You want to be unique. Leave footprints. Separate yourself from the pack. The 280 horsepower Mark 8, 489 a month, 2100 down. The only car in its class that lowers itself to the ground at highway speed just lowered something else. An excellent two year lease offer on America's best selling luxury coupe. Lincoln Mark 8, automotive excellence. At your Lincoln Mercury dealer, everybody wins. At preferred seating, great value stands alone. Like this magnificent Italian leather sofa for an amazing $499. Visit Preferred Seating at 10 great locations. Ladies, hard copies got eligible bachelors who are ready to say, I do. Most of the guys are very marriage oriented. It's Wives Wanted. Then, he was on his way to prison for killing a young man. Until one night, he and his wife mysteriously disappeared. Their car abandoned on a bridge. Their bodies nowhere to be found. Was it suicide or a scam? Find out on the next Hard Copy. Tonight at 7.30 on Channel 2. There are reports that Tanya Harding's ex-husband has finally cut a deal with prosecutors. It, uh, it would uh, hit, make his jail time from two years to a year in exchange for testimony against the other defendants. Jeff Galuli is one of four men charged in the attack on Harding's skating rival, Nancy Kerrigan. Galuli claims Harding was in on the plot from the start. She has not been charged, but a report in the Detroit Free Press today says she got the number of Kerrigan's hotel room the day of the attack. Galuli has said the attack was originally planned for Kerrigan's hotel room. And an eight-year-old boy watching TV with his family is the latest victim of the city's gun violence. He was struck in the neck last night by a bullet which came through the window of his queen's apartment. Police say 27-year-old George Brown fired the bullet. He was arrested last night in Elmhurst and charged oh, with right disorderly there. conduct and first-degree assault. The boy is in satisfactory condition tonight. Doctors say he will recover. The posh Russian tea room is back in business tonight. Despite a fire this morning, officials say the blaze probably started in the kitchen and was confined to the building's ductwork. The 57th Street restaurant has long been popular with tourists and locals alike. It had to be shut down for lunch today, but it is open again tonight. Bit of good news? Yes. All right. Well, coming up after the break, Elaine Lewis joins us again with another look at the weather. Plus, Los Angeles is rattled with another series of aftershocks, and these are some of the strongest yet. And later, a World Cup ski race comes to a horrifying end when a racer loses control and crashes into a pole. Postcards from Camp, sponsored by Visa. A big part of our training as skiers is what is called cross-training now. All those things help us with our agilities and our quickness, so that helps our skiing. The ski team exists and survives solely by sponsors like Visa. Visa sponsorship is really important to us.
MCI called and they want friends and family phone numbers and if they are on that friends and family, you get a better deal. Well, nobody was in my family, so it's not a better deal. I thought it would be a lot more savings. You want to give us savings? Give us savings. Just give it to us. You got it. New AT&T True USA Savings. Spend $25 a month and get 20% off AT&T calls to anyone in the USA guaranteed. Two out of three friends and family users on basic or prime time will save more on True USA Savings. Bye, UCI. Your <laughs> true voice. No global only, just the facts. From Mexico to Chile to Malaysia, there's an emerging world. 5.4 billion people, 25 trillion GDP. Grown to a size that dwarfs our own. Global targets for the young funds that probe, pounce, pursue profit. Sure, there are risks, but travel can be rewarding. Travel with Dreyfus for the lion's share. It's yours for the taking. Cold, hard cash days at your Chrysler Plymouth dealers. Your chance to save cold, hard cash on Plymouth Sundance. Now priced as low as $83.11. You get a driver's airbag, power steering, power brakes, and $1,000 cash back. But this special allotment with factory savings is going fast. So get into your Chrysler Plymouth dealer now and save cold, hard cash on Plymouth Sundance. But hurry, at this price, they won't last. These women are living proof that early detection of breast cancer saves lives. So call your local American Cancer Society for information. Well, Los Angeles was hit today by some of the strongest aftershocks yet. The largest before dawn this morning registered 5.0 on the Richter scale. It was big enough to topple a parking structure at Northridge, which had been damaged in the original quake back on January 17th. Scientists say Los Angeles can expect aftershocks, including big ones, to continue for at least another week. And the big question here is, uh, what do we expect uh, weather-wise here for another week? Well, you know, one of the things that people were saying to us yesterday was, thank goodness we're not in L.A. You know, the weather's Absolutely. bad, but at least we're not in Los Angeles. What I, do you say? I like, don't know. I wonder about that. better all, all the time. Well, they're looking better. We're going to get a break, and in this wonderful break, of course, we can clean up some of the flooded basements. We can fix some of our broken pipes, and maybe they can attack some of the many potholes out there that have been caused by all the freezing and thawing. At any rate, we are going to get a break, and right now, it's pretty nice, actually. In Central Park, we have partly cloudy conditions, and the temperature is 36 degrees all around the area. The temperatures are in the mid-30s, and the winds are calm. Now, on the satellite, there's a lot of cloudiness across the area, not so much in our area. What we have is two frontal systems, a very weak one across our area, coming through tonight dry. No problems with that. And, of course, the one we're concerned with is the one well to the south, where that area of low pressure is going to to move along that front, but the good part of this is, as it moves, it is going to move off to the east over the ocean, partly because of that front dropping down, and that's going to kind of help as a block. Right now, on the current radar, we have a lot of rain across the southeast, and had this moisture been able to come up our direction, that would have been our sleet and snow, but we are very lucky now, and it's going to stay off to the south. So the forecast for tonight is kind of cloudy conditions, temperatures about normal for this time of year in the low to mid-20s. For tomorrow, a lot of cloudiness around, but a pleasant day, and the temperatures will get up again into the normal range for this time of year. Maybe a little bit colder than normal, because actually the normal high for now is about 38 degrees, but not too bad. Then for Monday, breezy, cloudy, but no storm for a change. And it doesn't Thank look like a storm for goodness. the rest of the week, at least till Thursday. So Monday morning, I won't be standing you out there on Route 3. <laughs> right, you won't have a Reporting problem live in that weather. <laughs> right. <laughs> Elaine, I love you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and coming up after the break, President Clinton says his plan has the prescription to heal the nation's health crisis. And another boatload of Haitians arrives on the shores of Miami, but will authorities let them stay? And later, tragedy at a World Cup ski race. A two-time world champion dies after wiping out at 65 miles an hour. All of these children have one thing in common. All of them were unplanned pregnancies. Pregnancies that could have ended in abortion. But their parents toughed it out, listened to their hearts, and discovered along the way that sometimes the best things in life aren't planned. Life, what a beautiful choice. 
This Sunday, JCPenney guarantees you a win. Present our coupon. For 25% off any single regular price purchase in the store. It's Super Sunday at JCPenney. At the New York Stock Exchange today, astute investors are focusing on securities with underlying value. And the same goes for leasing an automobile. What counts is underlying value. Take the lease available now in a 1994 Cadillac DeVille. Monthly payments are modest, very modest, and it's short term. See your Cadillac Tri-Statesman. In this world, good timing is everything. President Clinton today blasted Republicans who charge he has inflated the nation's health crisis. Critics of the president's health plan say it's too big for the problem it's supposed to fix. They argue that there's no real crisis in health care, only some problems. But in his radio address today, the president said the only people who say there's no crisis are in Washington, D.C. Well, the president and his health plan got applause today from the nation's governors who are meeting in Washington, D.C. New Jersey's Christy Whitman is among those participating in this year's governor's conference. Governors as a group are one of the most vocal supporters of his health reform because of its growing burden on state budgets. They also praise the White House for its focus on crime and welfare reform. And PLO Chief Yasser Arafat and Israeli Foreign Minister Shimon Peres are beginning talks today trying to break the deadlock over Mideast peace. The two leaders are meeting in the Swiss resort town of Davos. Disputes over border crossings have held up the agreement over Palestinian self-rule for more than six weeks, but officials are already playing down hopes that these meetings will end the disputes. Well, a freighter carrying as many as 60 Haitians sits off the coast of Miami Beach tonight. The Coast Guard says it's waiting for word from Washington on whether to bring the boat back to Haiti or allow the Haitians to come on shore. Police are holding nine Haitians who made it to shore before the Coast Guard arrived, but others escaped. And Tom Verrato is next with sports. He has pictures as a new class of inductees is welcomed into the Football Hall of Fame. Plus, Seton Hall goes on the road to take on Boston College. Tom has highlights next. The critics have spoken. Simply the best looking car built in or out of the U.S. One of the best going cars for the money. In appearance and performance, an excellent driving machine. Yes, I'd rather drive a Buick. Quotes from real people about great cars, like the best-selling full-size sedan in America, Buick LeSabre. Very affordable, very equipped, and backed by the people who sell and service Buick quality. Just one test drive will convince you. Buick dealers offer safety, quality, and real value you can afford. Some months wind up being more expensive than others, which is why we designed the Chase credit card to make you feel comfortable making big purchases. Months when you have a higher balance, we'll take our already low interest rate and lower it to 13.4. Call 1-800-AT-CHASE. Whatever your needs, Chase has a credit card to meet them. And that sits well with everyone. Chase Manhattan. Profit from the experience. You know, IHOP's country griddle cakes are made with rich buttermilk and real cream of wheat. So beneath that light, crispy texture is a real country taste. And you can get them lots of different ways at IHOP. But no matter how you have them, they'll make you feel like you're starting your day down on the farm. Did I order milk? IHOP's Country Griddle Combo, now only $2.99. Two eggs, two bacon or sausage, and two Country Griddle pancakes. Just $2.99 at your IHOP now. It only takes five seconds for him to break in. Ten seconds to take your car. But the time he'll do if he's caught will shock you. It's become a crime without punishment Thursday. A Channel 2 News investigation. The system is letting them get away with a slap on the wrist, and you're paying the price. Arrested about once every month. If you're not angry yet, you will be after you see License to Steal. Thursday at 11 on Channel 2 News. Well, one of the world's top skiers crashed and died today on the slopes of Germany. It happened during the Women's World Cup competition. Two-time World Cup champion Ulrika Meyer was going more than 60 miles an hour when she lost control of her right ski and crashed into a post. She died of a broken neck. Meyer, an Austrian, was the mother of a four-year-old girl. She was considered a favorite to win a medal in next month's Olympics. 
Baseball Hall of Famer Mickey Mantle is at the Betty Ford Center tonight seeking inpatient treatment for alcohol abuse. He'll be out next month, but his spokesman says Mantle is already making plans for a sober future. The former Yankee reportedly plans to work with youngsters to educate them about the dangers of alcohol abuse. Mantle checked into the center after experiencing blackouts and memory loss linked to a 43-year battle with alcohol. And Mickey Mantle is a baseball Hall of Famer, and Tom Verrato joins us now with some football have, Hall of Fame. We have a new class today, Carol. The class of 94 all graduated with honors, and that's why they're headed to the Football Hall of Fame in Canton in July. This year's class is led by Cowboy running back Tony Dorsett. The Heisman Trophy winner from Pittsburgh finished his career as the NFL's second leading rusher. He could do it all. He could catch, he could run, and folks, ain't nobody going to take away his record 99-yard run from scrimmage back in 83. Now joining Dorsett and Canton is Cowboy teammate Randy White, Cardinal tight end Jackie Smith, San Francisco cornerback Jimmy Johnson, Cleveland running back Leroy Kelly, and Viking coach of 18 years Bud Grant, and they'll all go in in Canton July 30th. Well, as for uh, tomorrow's Super Bowl, you know, folks, I wouldn't worry about the Cowboys getting a good night's sleep tonight. Let's go down to Atlanta. You see, the Cowboys took their final walk through at the Georgia Dome this afternoon, and I don't know. I, I've never been to a Super Bowl before, but just, just judging, just judging by Emmett Smith here, I wouldn't say these guys have many butterflies in their bellies. Of course, if you didn't know by now, they're ten and a half point favorites to send the Bills to their fourth straight Super Bowl loss. Well, the Knicks are in Seattle tonight. The Nets are at Golden State. Today, Boston College beat Seton Hall 70 to 58. Let's go to uh, Newton Mass now. Hall's Andre Brown gets his pocket pick by Malcolm Huckabee. Huckabee knows what to do with it. He slides, he glides, he lays it in. BC led 30-27 at the half. Eagles went on a 14-0 run to start the second half. Howard Isley with a nice one-handed push. Isley finished with 20. The Hall loses to BC 70 to 58. Pirates are three and six in the conference. Well, if you think Florida State Heisman Trophy winner Charlie Ward's a better football player than he is a basketball player, folks, think again. Let's go to Atlanta now. Ward's taken so many snaps from center as a quarterback. Look at that save right there. It was a natural. Right to Bobby Sura, he finishes it off. Sura had 21, but number 21 Georgia Tech still led. Now, down the stretch, they led by one. Charlie Ward, Mr. Mr. Money, he makes it. Tech loses to Florida State by one. And then the shot of the day, Wisconsin's Michael Finley. He's so good, he doesn't even have to look at the basket, folks. Finley had 30, but the Badgers lost to Michigan anyway, 79-75. Well, the Rangers and their five-game win streak ran out of time and steam last night in Anaheim. The Mighty Ducks, the Mighty Ducks beat them 3-2. Rangers go 2-1 on the West Coast swing. Let's go to the pond now. Late second period, 2-1 Ducks. Gary Volk, I don't know where he's passing it to, but Mark Messier says thank you, and he shoots and scores. That was his second of the night, 18th of the, of the uh, season. And then Sacco in front to Bobby Dallas. That was the game winner, 3-2 past Glenn Healy. Healy's only first start in seven games. 3-2 Ducks win. Rangers will come home to play Pittsburgh on Monday. Well, the Devils are in Vancouver tonight, but, you know, folks, they seem to be as comfortable on the road as they are at home. Last night, they tied Calgary 2-all. That means they're uh, unbeaten in their last five games away from the Meadowlands. Let's go to the Saddle Dome now. Scoreless in the first, Stefan Richer. He shoots and scores. That's number 19, Andre Trefiloff. He was beaten on that one. Now it's 2-1 Flames in the second. Devils on the power play, Richer. Bounces it off Chris Dahlquist. He meant to do that. He scores his second one. Two all final, though. The uh, Devils' second straight tie. And Islanders are in Boston tonight. As a matter of fact, it's in progress right now. They uh, lost to the Bruins on the island last night. In tennis, it's an All-American Australian Open. Top seed Pete Sampras against uh, Todd Martin. That'll be tonight, which is actually tomorrow in Australia. Last night, which is actually today in Australia, <laughs> Steffi Graf wiped out Arantxa sanchez Vicario in 57 minutes, which is actually an hour and a half in Australia. Let's quickly go to Melbourne. We're not going to Melbourne. Take it from me. There she is, Steffi Graf, match point, and three backhands did it. Steffi Graf in 57 minutes wiped out Arantxa sanchez Vicario. People in women's tennis are saying, Monica Sellis, please come back. Uh, Steffi Graf. What time is it in Australia? Hmm, let me think about that. I'll tell you to let work on it. We got to go here. Get in a rush. Let's go. That's Channel 2 News, Saturday, the early edition. I'm Ren Scott. And I'm Carol Ayavana. Thank you for joining us. Ren and I will be back at 11 for the later edition of Channel 2 News Saturday. See you then. A dramatic life or death struggle on a dark highway caught on tape behind closed doors at the palace. Plus, these hunks itching to get hitched on hard copy next.